Hello, welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's Top 10 Least Favorite Star Trek Characters. In this video, I will count down my 10 uh, characters from the Star Trek franchise that are my least favorite, Do I that I care for the least, that I don't like, that I hate to see on screen. I don't like them. Anyway, this video is a Patreon requested video requested by Patron Cardinal Doomsday. Cardinal Doomsday, thank you so much for requesting us and for your support. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, you can just follow the link below. If you support me at $10 or more a month, you can request videos like this one. Anywho, um, <laughs> get it. I did a, a uh, top 10 favorite character video like I think two or three years ago maybe even four years ago and I did have a top five least favorite characters list but that was just five and that was years ago now I've changed slightly because I just re-watched most of the shows I re-watched uh Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and Enterprise recently seeing a few of TNG and TOS here and there so it's a bit more fresh in my mind Oh, what uh, my least favorite characters are. Now, <clears throat> it should be noted that any character that is eligible for my list would be not just the main cast members, but any supporting character that's been in more than two episodes but had a, a somewhat important role or speaking role. It can't be like... You know, Lieutenant Ayala, who just sat in the background in Voyager, didn't say anything. Or like Ensign Rager from TNG, someone who just sits there and goes, I, sir, and doesn't really have any personality whatsoever. Some of those people appear in like like 20 episodes, but I'm not counting them. Like, it could just be two episodes, but as long as they had like some importance, like Vash or, or Barkley or someone like that. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I'm counting all Star Trek series, original series, animated series, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, uh, Enterprise, and Discovery. Although this is made before Picard came out and uh, before Season 3 of Discovery comes out. So I'm just judging Discovery off the two years. But just if you're not familiar with my channel, I'm not a Discovery hater. So this list isn't going to be filled to the brim with Discovery Channel uh, characters. <laughs> like I'm sure a lot of people's lists would be. I actually went on record saying I think I like the characters of Discovery better than the characters of Enterprise. And I fully stand by that statement. Anyway, generally speaking, <laughs> let me get into... My top 10 least favorite characters of the Star, entire Star Trek franchise. But, before I get into my top 10, I'm not going to do honorable mentions. I'm going to do a list that's kind of different. Because these are characters that are not my least favorite characters. But they're characters that I acknowledge that the writers often either underuse them or misuse them. That there was nothing inherently wrong with the characters themselves. Like the actors who played them were good. And the inherent characteristics of the character was interesting. There was nothing wrong with it. It's just oftentimes the writers would misuse these characters. Or not know how to use them and end up doing nothing with them. But when they were used correctly, they were actually really good. And most of these characters are characters that um, you're going to... I have to mention them beforehand because you're going to be surprised that they're not on my list. Because most people... Because that video I talked about that I did, uh, my top ten favorite characters, that actually got like crap ton of views. Like way more views than I thought I'd ever get. So I got tons of comments with people... You know, everyone has their opinion on my list. <laughs> a lot of people, you suck! Your list is terrible! Go fuck yourself! I got a couple comments like that. But anyway, a lot of people, shall we say, disagree with my list. And uh, particularly the worst list. And um, I've seen a lot of these names repeated over and over again. How come this character's not on your list? How come that character's not on your list? And these are the five characters I name. That I actually don't think they're all that bad. I just think the writers didn't know how to use them all the time. Certain writers. Anyway, uh, so that list of characters, I'm just going to spell them out. Deanna Troy, Neelix, Harry Kim, Kess, 
and Jake Sisko. Now, Jake Sisko, I haven't heard anyone complain about, to be fair. So he's not one that people... But the rest, especially Troy, people really have it in for Troy, which is very weird. It didn't used to be that way. It used to be everyone hated Wesley. But now people don't seem to mind Wesley. And now it's, like, really trendy to hate on Troy. She's not my favorite character. <laughs> she can be. But... I think she's a classic case that a lot of the times the writers did not know how to use her. Now, the most common thing with Troy is that her powers were often uh, conveniently weaker than they've been established to be, or all of a sudden, like, she just loses her powers because it's convenient for the plot. And to me, that's not a, that's not a problem inherent to the character. That's not a problem with the character or the actor. It's just certain writers, not all of them, but certain episodes of writers don't know how to how to use her properly, so they just try to pretend that she doesn't have the powers that she has. So I see that a fault of the writer. So I actually don't fault the character of Troy. I think it when used correctly, like Face of the Enemy is a really good episode. Uh, and I think she she has a really drawn out character and disaster. She was good in that, uh, so I don't I gotta disagree with all this Troy hate. Um, now Neelix, I did a whole podcast uh, on my channel uh, <laughs> uh, with my friend Ellen, and uh, because it was her idea, because she also disagreed with all the Neelix hate. And in that podcast, I went and had a list of episodes I thought he was awesome in and a list of episodes he thought it, I, it was terrible in. Now, a lot of people hate, like they despise Neelix. Now, again, he, to me, he's the classic character that certain writers did not know how to use him. But when he was used correctly, he, he actually came off as a really strong... And Ethan Phillips, who plays him, is an amazing actor. And he came off as a very strong character, particularly in episodes uh, like Detrell. It's one of my favorite episodes. And fight me on this, I'll fight you. I love the Neelix and Kess relationship, particularly in that episode. Go watch Detrell before you tell me Neelix and Kess relationship sucks. But, uh, and there's other episodes where Neelix is used very well. But some writers just did not know how to use him, so he just came off as an annoying moron. <laughs> and I can see why that would rub people the wrong way. But I look at it as a whole, and I think there's nothing wrong with the character inherently. I just think a lot of times the writers just didn't try, and that's a problem with Voyager overall. Harry Kim, I didn't have a problem. Harry Kim was a really good, like, uh, Garrett Wong was an amazing actor. When he was given something to do, he knocked it the fuck out of the park. I think the, the problem with Harry Kim is that the writers, again, a lot of times they didn't know what to do with him, and a lot of times they wrote him in shitty episodes. But when they actually wrote him correctly, he was a very interesting character. Uh, particularly the episode Warhead. Seeing him go head to head with the Doctor, and then when the Doctor was taken over by a uh, weapon, uh, weapon of mass, an intelligent weapon of mass destruction. That was amazing. Kess, <laughs> I put her because I, actually, I had no problem with Kess. I don't know why people hated her for the first two seasons. But in the third season, they completely ruined her character. And that's, I think it's, it's natural that she got written off the show because it's not her fault. It's not the actor's fault, but it's the fucking writer's fault because they ruined her. They didn't know what the fuck to do with her in season three, but season three of Voyager is bad overall. Jake Sisko, I mentioned him. He's. The oddball, as I said, not a lot of people hate him. But he's one that the writers obviously didn't know what the fuck to do with. And a lot of times... <coughs> the muse! <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, this isn't the first time in this video that the muse is going to come up. But a lot of times, the writers, when they tried to do something with him, it, uh, Valiant! <coughs> it ended up just being terrible. Like, they don't know what to do with him. Uh, they just didn't know because Wesley was in Starfleet and he wanted to, and Nog, he wanted to be a cadet. So then, oh, he's in Starfleet, so we got something to do with him. Jake was a writer. What the? F How does a writer fit into a show about a Starfleet crew working with Bajorans? It doesn't work. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with the character. It's just he didn't have much relevance. And so a lot of he didn't even appear that much, and when he did, they didn't know much. Now the strength of Jake Sisko, of course, is when he had episodes that were about his relationship with his father, like uh, the Visitor, of course, 
and uh, Homefront and Paradise Lost. Um, I think The Explorers is overrated. I wouldn't mention that. But, um, so he does work, but I think he should have just been a supporting character. Like, trying to make him a cast member, they made him obligated to try to do something with him, and most of the time he just got in the way. All right. <laughs> I'm going to make it, by the way, I'm going to make it my mission in life to have a hashtag, hashtag fuck the muse. Uh, one of my uh, loyal commenters who have been saying that to me a lot. And I want to make that my slogan. I'm going to put it on t-shirts. Fuck the muse. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Let me get into <laughs> my top ten least favorite characters. And yes, every character I name on this list. I think is worse than the five I just named. Fight me on this. Now, anyways, just my opinion, of course. I know I'm going to get tons of bad comments saying, How could you hate this person more than Neelix? What the fuck is wrong with you? Fair enough. You know, <laughs> you're entitled to your opinion, but this is my opinion. These are my ten least favorite characters. Anyway, let me get into my uh, number ten, Dr. Pulaski. Now, this is a character at the time of airing, and even like shortly after Next Gen, like 90s era, a lot of people hated her. I don't know if I really got that much Pulaski hate in recent times, but I guess that's because Next Generation is so old, and people just got used to her. I mean, it's not helped by the fact that Season 2 sucked, and <laughs> it was, in my opinion, the worst season of TNG, but it was a... Crusher was fine in Season 1. She was, she was an interesting, I mean, she was, maybe she wasn't given enough to do, but she had an interesting dynamic with Picard, and she added to the flavor of the show. Uh, apparently, it was uh, the studio heads that, for some reason, hated her. Or no, it was, uh, what's his face, the showrunner for season one and two. Can't name escape me at this, so, but apparently he's a huge asshole that nobody liked. And he demanded that crush should be written off the show and they had Pulaski instead now I don't like Pulaski because I see her as I don't think it's an actress by the way she's a good actress and credit to her she tries her best but I just don't like the character as written I think that she's too much of a McCoy wannabe uh, like having the colloquial doctor oh I hate transport like she's too much of a McCoy ripoff we don't need this in her antagonistic relationship with Picard. I was, oh, who gives a fuck about it? So a lot of times she just came off as annoying, and I was so glad when Crusher came back. Uh, and even though she had come back way before I started even watching the show. But anyway, ah, uh, yes. Let me get into my number nine least favorite character, and that is Admiral Cromwell. Uh, from Discovery. As I said, I don't hate all the Discovery characters, but I don't like Admiral Cromwell. Every time she came, I, she's just, especially the how they kept her around in season two, because she she had that season one feel to her, that the feel that I didn't like about season one. Because first of all, I don't buy her as a Starfleet Admiral. I know it's a trope in Star Trek for Admiral, Starfleet Admirals to be assholes and corrupt or whatever, but I got a comment the other day saying there's no such thing as, there's plenty of good Admirals. They just don't do much. Like, the ones who are assholes get more screen time because they're more interesting. But anyway, like, she's not, like, she, does, she doesn't turn into a villain the way a lot of Admirals do in Star Trek, but she's just... <sighs> All right. Everyone knows, uh, who, anyone who watched my Discovery reviews know how pissed off I was at Saru for, like, torturing this sentient being, the Tardigrade, and, and wanting to torture him just to save the captain's life, and uh, everyone was okay with that. And this fucking admiral had the nerve to, like, uh, you know, chastise Stamets for injecting himself with the genetic engineer stuff when he, he did it to stop his first officer from torturing a sentient being. And I was like, fuck you, Admiral. And there's a lot of other times where she's very un-Starfleet like. She's very un-Star Trek like. She's just like, oh, I'm gonna do And I just, uh, I was really happy when they killed her off. Like, she was it's a very blemish on the show, which I don't think sucks. But anyway. <sighs> Let me get into my number eight, which is the aforementioned 
Wesley Crusher. And I know, as I said, it's, it's become trendy to hate on Troy rather than Wesley, but I don't care because, again, I love Will Wheaton. And I think that's Will Wheaton, how he's become such a good actor and, uh, like, a uh, internet celebrity is probably part of the main reason why people don't really hate on Wesley anymore. But, something I really don't look forward to uh, when I rewatch, because I'm going to rewatch Next Generation again. I'm really not looking forward to those earlier seasons when Wesley's a huge factor. Because, I'm sorry, but he's the Mary Sue. He's like 50 billion times more of a Mary Sue than Michael Byrne ever was. Like, he saves the universe. He saves the ship in every episode. It's a fucking teenager. And apparently a lot of people hated Next Generation because of that. Uh, you ever see Galaxy Quest? I did a review of Galaxy Quest and uh, they had this, you know, young boy on the shoe going, pedal to the metal captain. And that was definitely making fun of Wesley Crusher because a fucking 14 year old shouldn't be a main officer on the goddamn bridge. He used to say, and he's like just super genius and he's always right. And it became a trope where everyone's like, shut up Wesley, you're an idiot I'm not gonna listen to you and they almost get the ship destroyed and Wesley saves the day <sighs> uh, again it's nothing against the actor um, but uh, like the first duty is probably the only decent episode that focused on him I just not interested in Wesley I'm sorry sorry but I'm not <laughs> and another character I forgot to mention that a lot of people are like, how could you not put her on this list as Tilly from Discovery? She's not on my list. And I go, how could you do that? Well, Wesley's worse. I'm sorry, but he is. I don't actually find her that annoying. Anyway, <clears throat> let me get into my number seven, which I know a lot of people are going to be like, what? How dare you? This is my list. Give him my opinion. And number seven is Nog. Yes! Nog is worse. He's more annoying than Neelix. Worse than Troy. Worse than Harry Kim or Cass. Fight you. Worse than Tilly. I'm going to fight you. I'll fight you on that. I fucking hate Nog. <laughs> he always annoyed me from, you know, from earlier season... Uh, he was just the, the annoying bad seed friend who was like, Come on, Jake, let's throw things at people. <laughs> and then later seasons, they completely fucking retconned his character. And like, oh, now he's this badass Starfleet who wants to go to the gym all the time. That, that was some of the most contrived character developments that I did not buy. At all. At all. At all. At all. And <laughs> he just became, he went from being the annoying bad influence to the annoying cadet stereotype like Wesley but worse in my opinion because <laughs> because he was just like oh I want to be on the Starfleet he's just he had no personality of his own he's just like oh those people these Marines are badass I want to be like them I want to be like Starfleet I want to join Red Squad even though I outrank them blah 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 now fuck him sorry sorry but no <laughs> anyway <sighs> let me get into my number six, which again, he was on my top five before, so I guess he got demoted to six. And he, a lot of people, how, what, how dare you put him on here? Tom Paris. And I think, to be fair, I could almost put Tom Paris in the same category as I did Harry Kim and Neelix. Because, in fact, a lot of characters on Voyager, <laughs> let's be fair, the last three seasons, anyone who wasn't Janeway, the Doctor of Seven and Nine, was neglected by the writers and treated very shittily for the last three seasons of Voyager. But Tom Paris, like, because, here's the thing, I had no problem with Tom Paris in season one and season two. In season three, he's starting to become annoying, and by season four, five, six, seven, eight, or no, there's no eight, <laughs> thank God, but by season four, five, and six, seven... I couldn't stand the fucker. And I blame Brennan Braga a lot for this because he, I talked about this in my Enterprise reviews. For some reason, he kept wanting to inject this bland 1950s, like, um, not Parchish family, like Little House on the Prairie, like, oh, I, gee whiz, I love you. Like, 
he was injecting that into Tom Paris. Like, Tom Paris was his badass criminal for the first two seasons. And then all of a sudden, they turned him into, the, like, oh, I'm obsessed with the 21st, 20th century. Gee whiz. And why? And uh, you know how, how much I can't stand his relationship to Bellana Torres. They had zero chemistry. They make no sense together. And Tom Paris was designed to be the ladies' man, like Kirk. Or, or well, Bashir was. <laughs> they kind of ruined it there, too. But, like, Kirk, he was supposed to be the ladies' man. They showed him hitting on a lot of girls in the first season, but he, they have him settle down and have Harry Kim be the single person to go out and adventure. It's like, no, you fucked it up. You got that reversed. Ugh. And it's just by the end of the season, he's like, oh, the Delta. Don't get me started on the Delta flag. I'm so dumb. I don't like this character. I'm sorry, but I don't. <laughs> anyway, let me get into the next, my number five, which was my number one when I did my video before, so I, he did drop, but he's still in my top five, Charles Tucker the Third, otherwise known as Trip. Now, I did watch season three of Enterprise recently, I gotta admit, he was used very well in season three of Enterprise, and he was a very fleshed out, fully developed character, uh, with the, like his story about him losing his sister, like that was powerful. I thought the actor did an amazing job playing off this, so that's why he dropped a couple of spots. So he's not at my number one anymore, but he's still not a good character. I still don't like him, and a lot of all that is because. Especially those first two seasons, but I would argue even season three when they use this character better, he's too much of a moron. He's again, he's Brenda Berger has that that 1950s stereotype of uh, you know the good southern uh, astronaut type guy, but they don't do anything like that. He's just a bland. And I don't buy that he's this naive. Like, they portray him as, like, a genius as far as warp engine goes. But he's a moron as far as common sense goes. And I don't buy that. And it's annoying. And I don't like to see that. Uh, a lot of times I can't stand this character. Like, a season two episode when he's trapped on a kid on the planet with that rich woman. And, and they, they, he's like, oh! And they have the antagonistic relationship because he's just a, a grease monkey. And then they end up falling. Oh, God. Oh, God. Don't. No. No. Don't get me started on that fucking episode. And his relationship to Paul. Like, uh, no. I like season three and four, but that's the one thing I didn't like. I did, 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 did. Like, why the fuck would Fox send him to do psycho, the, the thing, neuro pressure, whatever the fuck it was? Like, he knows they're gonna. Uh, uh, all right, no. Let me move on. <laughs> Let me move on to my number four, which is Luxana Troy. Hashtag fuck the muse. Loxana Troy, and this is where I disagree with my good friend Colonel Doomsday who requested this video, and another YouTuber I like to watch, Lore Runner. He just said recently he thought Loxana Troy was used well in Deep Space Nine. I think the exact opposite is true. I think I she never should have been on Deep Space Nine. Every episode she was in in Deep Space Nine was in my top 30 worst episodes. I can't stand her. They completely misused her. Uh, in Next Generation, she was also super annoying, so which is why she's so high on my list. But there's like couple episodes where she was okay. Like, uh, Dark Page was a pretty interesting episode. Uh, the Half of Life in Season 4 was pretty interesting. I thought the cost of living was actually kind of funny. Um, but, <laughs> god damn. Like, the overbearing parent cliche. Like, it's just... <sighs> I think Haven was okay, too. Like, her first appearance is just... Manhunt, though, was awful like and they just started to, because it was just driving home the it's like just this horny middle-aged woman who just wants to have sex with everyone keeps hitting on everyone They're like oh you could talk and it's like overbearing they overplayed this stereotype again nothing wrong with the actress the actress does an amazing job playing her but uh no <laughs> she's just an annoying character like she can be used right like half a life and uh, Cost of Living, I think, and even Dark Page are examples of her being used right. But the, too many times, especially her Deep Space Nine 
hashtag fuck the muse <laughs> appearances. Like she had no business being on Deep Space Nine. The writers had no idea how to write for her. To, anyway, <laughs> sorry, Colonel Doomsday, but you know how I feel. Anyway, <clears throat> let's get to my number three, which is, and this might surprise some people, Harry Mudd. Now, you might be asking, while well, you're referring to the original series depiction of Harry Mudd, the animated series depiction of Harry Mudd, or the Star Trek Discovery depiction of Harry Mudd, because the Discovery depiction was very different. Uh, and my answer to that question would be yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm referring to all of it. I, I don't like him in any of his incarnations. I hated him in the original series. I hated him in the animated series. And I hated him in Discovery. Now, Discovery, at least, I will say, Rain Wilson is a good actor. And I, I like his portrayal of Harry Mudd. The other guy from the 60s is like, Ooh! <laughs> Like, he's... A, I know that has more to do with the, the time period it came out and that kind of depiction was commonplace. But, oh, God, I can't stand it. But I still, you know, of course I still hated him in Discovery as well. Uh, <laughs> um, he was, it was like, oh, I'm not mad, I'm mud. Like, oh my god. I know a lot of people like that time loop episode he was in, but I thought the episode was okay, but it didn't make me hate Harry Mudd any less. I think his depiction in Discovery, he was too violent in Discovery, didn't really match. But they went a bit overboard with his, Ugh. and this is, this is what... <laughs> I hate about the original series. Like, it seemed like some people having, like, a fat guy pimping a bunch of hot chicks. <sighs> no. Yeah, I, 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 I hate this character. Any of his incarnations, I think he's an annoying, uh, cliche of a character. Don't like him. Number three. <sighs> so let me get <laughs> to my number two, which is, um... The Borg Queen. Now, she's someone I forgot to mention when I did my worst list before. Uh, and this is mainly for her Voyager depiction, even though, like, I think First Contact would have been way better had she not been in it. But if, it, if First Contact was her only appearance, I could live with it. I still wouldn't like it, but it would it would not irk me to this day the way her Voyager appearance is done. Now, Voyager I talked about and a lot of other videos, how um, they were fine with the Borg. A lot of people talk about how Voyager ruined the Borg, and I completely agree. But I maintain that Voyager's depiction of the Borg was decent up until the release. Uh, they introduced the Borg Queen. As soon as they introduced the Borg Queen, <clears throat> that's when they just totally fucked up the Borg. They became silly, cartoonish characters, and the Borg Queen in particular, like the way she was always like, Janeway! I'm like, oh my god. Like, the whole concept of the Borg Queen is a stupid concept because the Borg were invincible. They were f interesting. They were very scary and dynamic because because there was no face to them. Because they were just a collective of of a whole shitload of people in the hive mind. Like, it was, there was no one individual. And it, to me, the whole reason they introduced the Borg Queen is because they wanted to have a singular villain for the movie. Which, oh, we're a movie. We need to have a singular actual villain, which is stupid. Like, they should just avoid tropes like that. And the moment they bring their own Voyager and made her like a Scooby-Doo. Janeway! Oh, no, it's Janeway! Oh, I would have gotten away for it, too, if it wasn't for your rascally Seven of Nine. Uh, and she has all these stupid convoluted plots to fucking, like, have, uh, goddamn, like, time travel and send <laughs> Seven of Nine and Voyager to infiltrate them so they can build a bioweapon when all she needs to do is send more than one fucking ship to Earth in order to get it! <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> enough of that. <laughs> Let me get into my number one. As I said, this wasn't my number one. I think he might have been my number two last time. But anyone, anyone familiar with my channel will know who I'm about to name. Anyone who's not familiar with my channel and who likes this character might be shocked and surprised. But <laughs> anyone who knows me will, won't be the least bit surprised. And that is Vic Fontaine. My number one least favorite character. I cannot stand this character. I just recently watched Deep Space Nine and like 
he's a blemish. Like the whole the finale of Deep Space Nine, what uh, what you leave behind, or what we left behind, what we no, it's a documentary. What you leave behind, that is an amazing finale, and it would be one of my favorite finales of all time. Well, it is, but it would be like in my top three. It would be one of the best episodes of Deep Space Nine, maybe even the best episode of Deep Space Nine, if it wasn't for this fucking singing hologram. They put devote fifteen minutes to somewhere. What the. Is this? <laughs> Deep Space Nine is not a variety show. I don't watch it to listen to Frank Sinatra's song. <laughs> what is this? And that is the worst thing about this character. And uh, don't even get me started on his solo episode, Bada Bing, Bada Bang. Like, I people, I did my worst list of Voyager, and people were worried I was going to have a heart attack because I just lost my shit complaining about how shit. <laughs> fucking shitty that episode is and because here's the thing with Vic Fontaine is because whenever he's in an episode especially if he's a main character or a main theme in the episode you're gonna have to sit through at least 10 minutes of fucking lounge singing what the fuck <laughs> that's not why I watch Deep Space Nine and besides that even if you look beyond that he's just a guy in the ripoff and like trying to give advice. Hey, Polly, I'm here. And uh, it just shows how Iron Steven Bear is too obsessed with <laughs> Vegas and lounge singers. It doesn't have any place on Deep Space Nine. And I actually did, did tell you a secret. Well, it's not a secret. But I don't like how Deep Space... Now, any Star Trek show uses the holodeck as an excuse to introduce 20th century elements. I think that's lazy, uh, as lame, or it's better than the original series, which is, let's just go to a planet, and it's just like, the, at least the holodeck is uh, more plausible, but really it's just an excuse to introduce 20th century elements. We don't fucking need that. We do not need that in Deep Space Nine, which was an awesome show, perfect show. It did not need this character. Now, I did have one comment on my other video recently that said, oh, he was in three episodes. Why are you even bother bringing him up? Actually, he was in ten episodes, which actually surprised me. I thought he was in a lot more. It seems like more. Like, he ruined some good episodes. Like, the fuck it. Like, I've been waiting forever for Kira and Oda to get together. And once they did it, was, I love the relationship. Again, I'll fight you on this. I thought it was an amazing relationship. But they got them together by introducing this fucking lounge singer and having Oda playing the piano and saying, <laughs> like, come on, <laughs> No! And then he ruined the finale with his stupid montage of some well, uh, Fuck! This character, fuck Vic Montaigne. That's another hashtag. Hashtag fuck the muse. Hashtag fuck Vic Montaigne. <sighs> anyway, I should stop before I have a heart attack. <laughs> anyway, that is just my opinion, man. That is my personal least favorite characters. Feel free to drop yours. I know a lot of people are going to be like, how dare you put Nog over in the Alex? I'm just waiting. I'm waiting. I know it's coming. Anyway, fight you on that. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys so much uh, for watching this, and thank you. Uh, Patreons for supporting the channel is very much appreciated. At the moment, I am doing a patron only series for uh, Star Trek the Animated Series. I'm reviewing every episode, two episodes per month, uh, exclusively for Patreon supporters. And in addition, um, I am re pre releasing some of my videos, particularly right now, I'm doing the Star Trek Enterprise, so where I do a season for my Patreon viewers, I'll release it a couple weeks or a week early. Uh, and that's if you want to support me at any level, a dollar, whatever, you'll get these perks as well as uh, my schedule of what videos are coming up next. Um, but if you want to do five dollars more, you can leave your thoughts on any episode I'm not reviewing, and I'll read them in my video. And if you want to do ten dollars or more, you can request videos like this one. Any video you want me to do, as long as it's relevant to my channel, and I'll do it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out my channel as I do many more uh, videos on Star Trek, as well as I cover other shows like The Expanse, Lost, and more. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all that. 
Thanks a lot for watching.